Hi, this is the step-by-step -step video for painting the broom hair project that was offered as a webinar. This is for those of you who had to step away and couldn't finish the class or something came up and you couldn't take the class once you signed up, signed up for it or if you just need to finish up some thing, things and you want a refresher on what we did during class. This is not an actual recording of the class. This is going to be a step-by-step -step video, so there won't be a, uh, as much time in between steps. It will be me painting and uh, you watching, and if you need to uh, clarify something, you can always stop the video and back it up. And um, so I thought that might be easier than you watching five hours of class. So anyway, thanks so much for taking the seminar and um, I appreciate it. I hope you had a great time and we are going to get started. All right, we're gonna get started. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna dry brush some highlighting on our background. And the background's painted with brilliant purple and we are going to dry brush some highlighting on it with purple petal and so um, I'll show you how I like to dry brush if you'll notice there's a palette cam up in the corner so you can see what I'm doing on my palette um, and I will also show you a here up close what I'm gonna do is I'm <clears throat> excuse me I'm gonna use uh, a short round sable brush this one's from Dynasty uh, I use uh, Royal Langnickel also but uh, I'm going to pick up some of the purple petal on my brush and I'm going to scrub it around on my palette in a counterclockwise and clockwise uh, motion. And what that's going to do is it's going to work some of that paint into the bristles. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe it off on my... Eh, let's get where you can see what I'm doing wipe off on the towel that I keep behind my thing my project and then I'm going to go to this part of my hand and I'm just going to scrub it around on my hand now when I hit this part of my hand it feels cool and as I continue to scrub it around it loses its coolness it doesn't get hot or warm or anything like that it's just not cool anymore and um, once it's reached that point which doesn't usually take as long as what I'm scrubbing right now um, that's a pretty good indicator that you've taken enough paint out of your brush that you can go to your piece. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to my piece and in these negative spaces, whoops, didn't take out enough. That's why God gave you spit. And I'm going to go to these pieces. That's a way to start off and show you the wrong thing to do. So I'm going to scrub some of this light color on and um, the background in these negative spaces around the design. It doesn't have to be real neat. This is the sky, by the way, by the way. so it's gonna be kinda um, sketchy and uneven, and that's okay. So I'm just gonna add this color to the background. And then all I'm doing is kind of breaking it up, otherwise it would just be a big purple background and wouldn't look real good. So wherever you can fit your brush in to get some color would be great, except you know, I started to go there, but you don't need to because that's going to be hair. And you can see I can dry brush a pretty long time with this. So... Let's get that. Now I need a little bit more paint, so I'm going to go back to my palette and pick it up. Go through those steps again. Now, very important, you didn't put any water in this brush. So, we have some dry brushing there on the background. Now what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and rinse my brush out because I'm done dry brushing with that color. And what's good about these brushes is that because they're the sables, um, they dry relatively quickly. So you can come back and use it again in a little bit. And now I'm going to go in and I'm going to float some shading 
around the design with some dioxazine purple. Of course, all the paints are deco art. Shake them up good if you haven't used them in a while. Oops, lid came off. So I'm going to give myself some diox purple. So let's corner load our brush, load our brush, corner load, blend it out. Now you want this to be a, a relatively soft float. So you, you want to blend it out pretty well. So you can see I'm working it pretty good on my palette there. And what I'm going to do, avoiding the hair area, I'm just going to go around the whole design with this float of dioxazine purple. Now it doesn't have to be a perfect float. You can pity pat it around there. And if you like to use a mop brush, which I do, uh, you can always come in and mop and soften this float a little bit. But we just needed to pop that design off the background there. So I am going to continue to float dioxazine purple around the design area. I'm going to float it on the background around the design. And so there's really no need for you to sit and watch me do this. So I am going to finish that up and I will come back. Alright, so as you can see, I floated um, the diox purple all the way around the design elements. I'm also going to go now and float dioxazine purple around the outside edge of the project. So um, that one, you need it to be a little bit wider float. So we'll just float. And it doesn't have to be a perfect float. We have an edge treatment that we uh, put around this at the end. And um, so it doesn't have to be a perfect float. And aren't you relieved? So just put a little, slap a little shading on there. You don't have to make it a career. We just want to make sure that we add as much interest to that background as we can. I guess I missed right there. All right, there are several uh, places you want to check and make sure that you've got the shading in. Um, all these little nooks and crannies around the hands and the arms and uh, the broom and the hair. Looks like I missed a spot right there, so let's get that done. See, even I miss, um, mess up more often than I care to admit, actually. But it's important. I would stand out like a sore thumb when we got done. All right. So double check. Make sure you've got shading where you need to have shading. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come down here and work on our um, little border at the bottom here. And so this is where the drywall tape came in. And if you don't have the drywall tape, you can um, use a small pattern stencil of your choice. But I'm just going to put on drywall tape there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stencil those little checks on with golden yellow. So get a little golden yellow out because you don't need much. And I like to stencil with um, cosmetic wedge sponges. And so I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to load this sponge, the wide end, I hold the pointy in, um, and I'm going to dip it into the golden yellow and then I'm going to pounce it out on my palette. And I'm going to pounce it uh, quite a bit because I don't want it to be so full of paint that it will uh, bleed out underneath. So we're going to just go here and stencil the golden yellow and it doesn't have to be uh, that uh, what do I want to say it doesn't want to have it doesn't have to be even it can be you know uh, more 
uh, transparent here and there, more blotchy. It's okay. It's just, we're just adding a little bit of interest to this bottom area here. Because if you know me, I don't like to leave things untouched. I like interest in the background. Okay, it shouldn't take too long to do that. And I'm going to pull this off. And as you can see, I have blotches and stuff, and that's just fine. And you can hang on to the drywall tape and use it again and again until you just can't use it anymore. And let's see, I got a little bit of paint right here, but it'll be okay. All right. We're going to want to let that dry, and if you have a handy dandy uh, hair dryer, or a, if this is a Ranger heated craft gun, I like to use it because it's quiet and I can use it while I'm filming. So we're going to dry that real quick, and then what we're going to do is we're going to come back and we're going to dry brush some highlighting um, through the center of this area with golden yellow and we want to pick up a little bit of warm white what we want is a lighter value of the golden yellow and i just brush mix this so i'm going to pick up golden yellow and kind of scrub it around on my palette again because i'm doing that bright dry brush thing and i'm just going to pick up warm white and make a lighter value of that color and here i go to my hand again by the end of the class, we'll have color all over the back of our hand. It's not going to hurt you. Um, I checked uh, the government website for non-toxic, and it'll be just fine. I've been doing it for years. My hand hasn't fallen off yet. So I'm just going to dry brush this lighter color through the center. And here again, it, it's going to have lettering over it so it doesn't have to be even it can be blotchy but you just want to lighten up that center area a little bit okay At that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to float some shading on all four sides of this green uh, border with black forest green. That's if I can find it. There it is. And this is a pretty strong color so you want to blend it out pretty well so that you don't get like a black forest green stripe. So when I mean blend it out well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to corner load and start blending on my palette and I'm going to kind of walk away from that area that I'm blending in just so I leave more paint on the palette. So I'm going to go to this and just float this black forest green all the way around all four sides. I, I really like these two colors together. They play well with each other. So. And yes, you even want to go under where the broom is going to um, be on top of it, just in case some of it peeks through. I've got three sides done. Let's work on that fourth side. And don't worry too much because we put a stripe in between the green and the purple. Ooh, you don't want to do that. Got in a hurry. And got into my paint puddle. That's not a good thing. I'm just full of showing you what not to do.
but it wasn't a panic. Just wipe it off. All right. So there we go. We're going to move on to the dress. And we're going to work on this little part first. So this was painted with spiced pumpkin. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry brush some golden yellow into that. I already have golden yellow on my palette, so that's great. And there's such a small area that you don't need to, you won't get much in there. But you're going to dry brush golden yellow in there. And then we're going to use Heritage Brick to shade. And we're going to shade all four sides so it's kind of going to look like we filled it in with Heritage Brick. But we didn't. You end up not having to float that top edge because you get it kind of meets it meets in the middle there. All right. So there we go. Ooh, dress is done. Now let's work on the rest of the dress. That was painted with Royal Fuchsia. And so with that we're going to dry brush highlighting with baby pink. Just going through the palette here. We're using all the colors we have in the first few minutes. All right. So again, it's a small area. So get just get what you can in there. Baby pink. And then the shade on that part of the dress is with deep burgundy. And I'm going to float shading under the collar. going to go inside the little sleeve right there. Just a little touch. I don't know if you can see that right there. Next to the hand. And that's going to be on both sides. So right here. And right here. And it doesn't have to be a perfect float. It'll be okay. I want to go under the collar on this side. I'm going to go on the dress next to the sleeve right there. Touch a little bit in there. Basically you're just kind of shoving the tip of your brush into those corners there. And then you also want to go down the front edge just to define it a little bit better. All right. We also want to float I'm going to dry this a little bit. We're going to float across the bottom there where it's next to the um, green stripe. I did take 
a little baby pink and float it across the top edge of the sleeve just to make it stand out a little bit more. Otherwise you'd lose it. So we're just going to highlight that top edge. All right. Now you need a liner brush. Um, the size is worn off of this, but it's probably a size one. And I'm going to thin down some baby pink. And I'm going to add the stripes that are on here. So I have some little stripes. You want to be sure to follow the shape of the dress. So on the sleeves, they're basically straight up and down. But here on the front part of it, they curve to follow that front edge. Okay. And so you want to... I would probably start with the front edge ones first. Just some tiny little stripes. Right. If you need, you can put the pattern on, but they're just little stripes. I don't. It's completely up to you, though. And then on to the sleeves. I would start in the middle and work my way out. All right, there. That dress is done move on to the collar. The collar you based in in golden yellow. So we are going to dry brush some highlighting with warm white. So I'm drying out my brush there. And then pick up some warm white. And scrub it on my hand a little bit. And then I'm going to go in here, and as much as I can get in there, I'm going to dry brush some warm white. And I don't know if we can get into those areas, but if you can, dry brush as much as you can there. You're going to float shading on the... Um, color with spiced pumpkin. So a little bit of spice, spiced pumpkin. Blend it out. And you want to be sure you float next to the face. Both sides. You're going to float above the fingers. the thumb and you want to go underneath the broom and that's going to include on this side going next to the hand and I think I did go across the top edge Also, go around the bottom edge. Might as well. So, every side gets a float of spiced pumpkin. We're going to let that dry. I need some clean water. All right, back. Clean water, ready to go. We're going to add this stripe or this edge of Laguna. 
on the collar and then those little dots that are on the collar are done with washes of Laguna and if you have a stencil you can go ahead and use a stencil for the dots but I painted them in um, it's always good practice to paint those in so let's add this stripe along the edge of our collar and let's do this side and then we're just going to add some dots and all I did was thin down the paint the Laguna a little bit, make a wash, and just add some little dots. Doesn't have to take long. You can make bigger dots if you don't want it to take long at all, but it's always good to practice drawing circles with your brush. And sometimes their circles are ovals, and that's okay. Don't forget, you get a little half circles in there, some circles around the hands, and half circles on the edge. So you see, it doesn't have to take too long. Just to add a little bit of color on the card. we go. Alright, we're going on to page two and we're going to work on the broom handle that we have painted in. That was painted in with um, sable brown. So what we're going to do is you're going to need pebble. If you don't have pebble, fine will work. And we are going to dry brush some highlighting across the center of our broom handle with pebble and so I'm loading my dry brush again and I'm just going to dry brush some of this lighter brown across that broom handle feeling like I have to sneeze. So all the way across. And now we're going to um, float some shading and line some wood grain with burnt umber. bit of burnt umber out here on my palette and I'm going to float the shading first and then I'll come back with a liner brush and add some wood grain so I'm going to float the ends we'll just kind of bounce around I'll float next to or around the um, fingers want to go under the kitty cat's chin yours will look much better I'm sure I'm going to go under the witch's chin I never named her I don't know let's go next to her hand on both sides and you can go here next to the tie okay I'm going to dry that real quick because I want to float on the top and the bottom edge also so 
so still using burnt umber. I'm going to float all the way across the top edge. Let's do this top edge here. And then I'm also going to do the bottom edge. Let's see if I can do this without slopping paint all over. So far, so good. Okay. So we basically shaded everywhere we can possibly shade on that broom handle. And so now I'm going to come in a little closer so you can see when I do this um, wood grain. So I'm going to take a liner brush. Again, I'm using my number one. And I'm going to thin down some burnt umber and all I'm going to do is think like wood grain I'm going to pull some lines and they don't have to be straight and now I like to add knot holes every now and then so I'm going to show you how I do a knot hole let's see if I can get this so you can see it on the video I start on the tip and then I stop and flatten and then come back up on the tip and I just add a little outline around it. So anyway, here and there you want to add a knot hole. Don't get carried away. Not too many knot holes. But just adding a little bit of wood grain to the broom. Don't make the lines all the same length. And they definitely don't have to be straight. It can be a little squiggly. Because wood grain isn't always straight. Alright. So there we go. We have some wood grain. Now we're going to line highlighting on the wood grain with some thinned pebble. And this is going to go, uh, especially, you want to make sure you do it around the knot holes to make them stand out a little more. So, just going to go around the knot holes. And I'm going to add a couple lines here and there. Just to add some highlighted wood grain. So you see, this doesn't have to take a whole lot of time. Even though wood grain takes a long time. We're just going to quickly add this. Alright, looks good. So we're going to need some soft black. What we're going to do is we're going to darken the shading on the end around the cat's chin, her chin, around the hands with soft black. We just want to deepen that shading. We don't need to deepen the shading on top and bottom. So with soft black, let's just float this end here. Let's go next to the hand. Again. Let's go under her chin. And next to this hand, you can go next to that tie. Let's get this side of her hand. And under the catch chin. Let's 
All right, so we've deepened those areas there. Now we have one more thing to do, and that's going to be to dry brush a little bit brighter highlight with the warm. So this highlight is going to be kind of in the end here and up in the upper half of that broom handle. So I just want to do a little bit there and dry brush just a little across that top edge just to make it a little more round looking. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to work on this broom head here. And so you are going to need that half inch rake brush uh, that I told you about in prep. It needs to be uh, a rake or a comb. Langnickel is a comb. Uh, straight, not the filbert. And you're going to need uh, the colors gold and yellow. So you may want to put some more out if yours is a little dried up. You will need burnt umber. You will need burnt sienna. And you're going to need warm white. So burnt umber, burnt sienna, golden yellow, and warm white. And so if you've never worked with a a comb or a rake brush before. Um, let me show you what I like to do. Um, you're going to make liner consistency paint because what a comb or a rake brush is is basically a bunch of little liners that you're working together. So the first color we're going to work with is golden yellow. So I made liner consistency paint and I'm making sure that my brush gets loaded pretty good there. And then what I do is I go to my towel. If you use paper towels, I use regular terry cloth towels. I'm going to blot it out a little bit. And then I just go back and add paint to the tip. And if you want, you can kind of smash it down on your palette a little bit to make sure your tips are um, spread out. And then we're going to go to our broom here. And you can start inside that little tie and pull. You see I'm getting a, lot, a bunch of little lines. All right? And that's what you want. So you want to just pull. Think like straw. And this goes out into this green area here too. Just do a nice layer of this. You want to make sure you're coming to this line or out past it a little bit. But give yourself a nice base. And what this does is it, uh, it gives you the underwear of the uh, broom and it also gives you an opportunity to get a feel for that brush. Okay, so to that side, and now I'm going to kind of turn it this way so I can do this side. And this side is much the same. Just kind of pull like that straw is cinched in the middle there. So I think I want a little bit more here. And a little bit more through the center here. So if you notice, I kind of stay as straight up and down on my brush as I can um, so that I'm uh, using it as a, like I would a liner and staying on the tip of the brush. So now that you have that base down, you have pretty much have the shape of it, you want to dry it or let it dry uh, because if you don't and you go right in there when that's wet you'll just get mush and that doesn't look good you know, mush doesn't look good on anything so we're going to strike the stroke on some uh, thinned burnt umber on our broom and I didn't wash my brush out I just picked up some 
water to make a, a, a liner consistency paint. And now I'm going to come to back to my piece and I'm going to stroke thin burnt umber. And this is kind of going to go all over, but you don't want to cover up the um, yellow completely. We will come back and put the yellow back in in a little bit. So I've got dark straw in there now. Burnt umber, but it's dark straw. So now I'm going to do this side. You can need go. All right. Wash your, go ahead and wash your brush out. And let's dry this also so we don't get mush. All right. So the next color I want to stroke on is I just wanted to add a little bit different color into that. So I'm going to stroke on some burnt sienna. So I'm going to make liner consistency burnt sienna. And blot out my brush and then go back and pick up a little bit more. And I'm just going to add another value of color in here with Burnt Sienna. Alright. And let's do this end. And basically these colors have been going all over the broom head, not just staying concentrated in one stroke, one, one stroke, one area. So I wash my brush out. I'm going to dry this again. And then this is where I'm going to put the yellow back into my broom head. So I'm going to Thin down my yellow paint again, blot out my brush, and this can go all over also, but you still want to see the dark colors through it. And I think it makes for a really nice broom head. See how I can still see those dark colors through there. Let's do this side. I'm going to come back and add some more yellow. And this yellow I'm going to keep more in the top, say, two-thirds of the broom, and not so much down. Let's do that on this side. Okay, cool. So don't wash your brush out. We're going to stroke on the lightest area. And we're going to keep that mainly in the center, top center area. And so that is with uh, the golden straw that you have in your brush and some warm white. You just want to make a lighter value of that yellow. So I'm going to stroke that, keeping it in the top kind of center. Okay, looking good. 
Now I also am going to take a little bit of this golden yellow warm white mix. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to make sure I defined the edge of this broom and also kind of wipe out that uh, edge of shading that I put in there. So I'm just going to go on the tips and just define that edge a little bit. And kind of finish it off. little heavy handed there. Alright. That's it. Now that you can tell this is something that you could play with for a long time. If you wanted to bring more yellow back into your uh, broom, you could do that. Um, but it's um, basically those steps and uh, hopefully uh, your broom will look like a broom. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to paint this band that's around the um, broom head. And I did that with Mermaid Tail, which is a new deco art color. Well, it was new when I painted this. Let's put it that way. Who knows if they have new colors out now by the time this class happens. But just uh, the number four round will work good for this. And I'm just going to paint this band in with the mermaid tail All right and just wipe your brush out and go in and pick up a little warm white you want a lighter value mermaid tail and while this is still wet you can go in and uh, line the highlight on there and then again, you can wipe your brush out. You're going to need, you can use graphite, um, soft black will work. Anything that you have on your palette in the directions, it says graphite. But I'm going to just pick up some soft black because I just want to make a little bit darker mermaid tail. And the same way that I stroked on that highlight, I'm just going to stroke on a shadow there. So you see that you can do it with graphite. This is with soft black. And you can just wipe, um, clean your brush out, and pick up straight warm white, and stroke on the brightest highlight. Right. So there you go. Broom done. So I'm going to take a little break, let this dry, and we'll come back, and we're going to work on her face and her hands next. All right, I'm back. I just, I forgot a couple little things on this broom that we need to finish off first. Nothing too terrible, but we need to do some floating of shading with burnt umber. And that is going to go on either side of this tie that's around the broom head. Just right next to that tie. And then you also want to go across the top and the bottom of the uh, broom itself, the straw itself, just to kind of make it look a little rounder. And let's find my mop. Soften that up. We'll go on this side. It also kind of helps define it down here where it's on the green stripe. So just quick little floats of burnt umber. Nothing major, but it does add a lot. So then the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to deepen that shading um, next to the tie with a float of soft black and just those two places you don't need to go uh, the top and bottom of the straw just in here deepen it up 
So it looks like it's really cinched in there. Okay. And now we can call the broom complete. We are going to move on to the face. And the face you based in coral shell. We are going to do some highlighting with warm white. And this is going to be a dry brush. We're also going to work on the fingers too. So uh, while we're doing all this, don't forget the fingers. So dry brush again. Uh, my way or your way, whichever way works best for you. So I'm going to dry brush inside the nose and up the bridge of the nose. I'm going to go on the sides of the face next to the eyes. Gonna go down here on her chin and onto her cheeks a little bit, basically her whole face. You want to get some dry brushing of warm white on there. And she's gonna look bad. She's gonna go through puberty. It'll be okay. Right, and then we want to go down to the hands. The dry brush on this on the little heel of her hand. And a dry brush on the fingers. If you can get your brush in there to dry brush on the thumbs, that would be okay too. But don't worry about it if you can't. I'm dry brushing on the individual fingers. Right. Just wipe that brush out. We are going to give her some nice round cheeks. And that's done with Royal Fuchsia. You want to get out Royal Fuchsia and you want to get out Baby Pink. So pick up a little bit of Royal Fuchsia and do your little dry brush thingy. see I didn't pick up a whole lot of royal fuchsia so I'm going to give her cheek, nice round cheeks and they're gonna sit next to her nose and kind of under her eyes so just a nice soft cheek there Could probably use a little more color which isn't a bad thing to have to add more color. It's always hard if you have to take color away. Yeah, that's a little better. You can see it a little bit more. And it's a nice, it's a pretty big round cheek. There we go. That looks better. And let's get the other one on there. And just wipe your brush out again and pick up just a little bit of baby pink and all I'm going to do with the baby pink is I'm just going to lighten up the top of those cheeks a little bit okay this is especially helpful if you've gotten your cheeks a little too dark Now, we're going to fill up shading on the face and the hands, and um, I like to mix my own shading color, which is going to be Coral Blush and Burnt Sienna together, and it's two parts, Coral Blush, and you can just brush mix this, 
I actually use it so much that I mixed up a big old bottle of it. So, um, but for you, I'm going to show you how I mix it. So I've got uh, puddles of coral blush and burnt sienna there. And I'm going to, first I picked up the coral blush and I'm blending it through my brush a little bit. And then I'm going to pick up just a touch of burnt sienna just to give it a little bit more uh, shading color. And blend that out really well. And I'm going to float some shading. And we'll start on her face under the hat brim. doesn't matter if you get the uh, color on the eyes, it'll be okay. Let's go in the bottom of her nose. I'd like to mop there, that would be good. Soften that up. I'm going to go down the sides of her face and around her chin. And I'll come back in and put that lighter double chin in in a little bit. I'm going to go down the other side of her face. Okay. That's what happens when you get color on the wrong side of your brush. I'm not too worried about it. All right, I want to go around her nose. Kind of start up on the chisel and flatten as I go around the bottom of her nose. Right. We're going to go down to her hands now. I want to go on her hands next to the broom handle. when the little finger comes up. I want to go on her fingers across the front edge. So that kind of separates the fingers from each other. I want to go across the thumb, the bottom of the thumb, next to the broom handle. I'm going to do these fingers over here, turning them upside down to do them a little easier. to come back and do on the heel of the hand next to the sleeve. Okay, cool. We're going to take this um, <clears throat> shading color that we mixed up and with a liner brush I want to make a little bit of a wash of that mix. Add some water, thin it down and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to line a shadow 
above each eye. So what I like to do is start with my liner brush on the point about uh, two thirds of the way down one side of the eye, come up around the top and flatten the brush out and then come back up to the point on the other side of the eye so I get that nice C stroke looking shape above each eye. So about two thirds of the way down on the point as I come up around the top I flatten it out and then I come back down the other side and come back up to the point. So there. Cool. We are going to do a very soft float of royal fuchsia into the bottom of the nose. So you want to blend it out really well so you get a nice soft color. So you just want to add some color into the tip of her nose. We are going to float highlighting on the um, tops of the fingers and the tops of the thumb with warm white. So I'm going to go across the top of that thumb, that corner of your brush to clean up that room. And I'm going to go on each finger just to make them more defined, more separated from each other. Let's get our other thumb. our other fingers. All right. So now we have that little double chin in there and I don't know if you need to put the pattern on or not. I'm just going to sketch it on a little bit here. I pattern this after my own, kind of. I have three chins, um, but I only gave her one extra chin. And so I'm going to uh, highlight that chin with some warm white and blend it out really well. So I'm going to just start here, come down. And come back up. So she's got a little double chin. Now to define that a little bit more, I'm going to come back with that shading color, the Coral Blush Burnt Sienna shading color. Now if you don't want to mix your own, uh, you can use, um, I believe it's called Desert Clay. You could even use light cinnamon, although that's a little darker than I like. I'm just going to reinforce that double chin by floating under it with some of that shading color. All right, let's give her some fingernails. These are really easy. You need Irish moss. Just a little bit and all you're going to do is you're going to float Irish moss on to make the fingernails and so I blended it out and I'm just going to color up towards the back of her hand Oops, probably could use a little bit more color so it happens when you blend too much So I'm just giving her little fingernails. And 
She only has three fingers, so that makes it easy. Both hands. And now I'm going to come back and I'm going to highlight the tips of those fingernails with warm white. Just to make them stand out and look a little bit more like fingernails. It's like she went and had them done. It has a nice squared tip on them. Fingernails. We have fingernails. Let's go to her eyes. Now, I had you base her eyes in completely with um, lamp black. And so, what we're going to do is we're going to take a liner brush and we're going to give her some Irish moss, uh, Irish moss stroke in the bottom of her eye. Now, it's a crescent shaped stroke. You don't have to do it all in one stroke but you want to notice that it sits down in her eye but it doesn't sit right on the edge of her eye you want to leave a little rim of lamp black showing on the sides and the bottom of that eye so with Irish moss let's put in our stroke now you want to make it pretty big. You want it to take up at least a third to a half of that eye. Don't make a little teeny tiny line. And you see how I'm just lining this first one so I can stay away from the, the bottom edge. And then I just fill in. Right now, if you get a shape in there that you don't like, no worries because you can take the lamp black and you can fix it and make it the perfect shape that you want it to be. So, we are going to dry brush a little bit of highlighting in the black part of the eye with warm white. It's not a lot, just needed to break it up a little bit. So, I'm just gonna Scrub a little warm white in those eyes. And I also want to put a little bit of this inside the mouth. Okay. Now we're going to line the eyelashes. Now you can line them individually if you want, but I like to just take some lamp black, which I don't have out on my palette just yet. And I like to take my liner brush and thin down some lamp black a little bit. So I get like liner consistency paint. And what I like to do is, I'm going to try to show you this. I set the, the tip of my brush that's loaded with thin lamp black down inside the black of the eye. And then I just push it out and kind of make some squigglies to act like eyelashes. You can decide how many squigglies you want. So I set it down inside and just kind of squiggle it around to make some eyelashes. I also like to add some at what would be the corners of the eyes. So just a little dot right on the inside of the eye and a couple of lashes in the outside corner of the eye. It's really technical. But if you prefer, you can line each individual lash with the liner brush. 
Okay, now we're going to take some golden yellow and we're going to line a highlight through the center of the eyes. All right, we're going to line this highlight of golden yellow through the center of that green stroke just to give it a little bit more interest. You guessed it. Then just wash out your brush. It's a liner brush, and you want to pick up some straight warm white on your liner brush, and you're going to line or tap a smaller highlight through the center of that yellow. And then you're also going to stroke some highlights in the tops of the eyes and inside the mouth with warm white. And if, you, if it's not a comma stroke, that's okay. No judge. Which is probably a good thing since some days I can and some days I can't. Okay, and then I just put a little dot there, probably about, oh, I don't know, seven o'clock. And then there's also just a little stroke inside the mouth. All right, looks good. So we're gonna paint her lips, her, her bottom lip, with Royal Fuchsia. And so it's just the bottom lip that you paint all the way in with Royal Fuchsia. And then you also um, line very thinly around the top of the mouth. You can see here the bottom lip is really big and then there's just a thin line of royal fuchsia around the top. Okay, and just keep that line around the top a little thinner. Okay. And then what you're going to do is baby pink, you're going to line a highlight through the center of that bottom lip, much like you did um, in the eyes. And it doesn't have to be dry, it's okay if it's still wet. Okay, easy peasy. And then you're going to line shading in the corners of that bottom lip with deep burgundy. So just come from that point and deepen the corners of that lip. All right, got it. <coughs> and then what I want to do is I want to take a little bit of that uh, Coral Blush Burnt Sienna Shading Mix. And I want to <clears throat> add like a little shadow in the corners. I apologize. My asthma is just not being nice. So it's been a struggle this week. It's pretty bad when something as easy as breathing is a... Uh, uh, fight. Alright, so I just wanted to um, give it the look of the, the split between the lips. Alright, we're going to move on to the hat now. Back up a little bit so we can get the whole hat in there. And the hat was based with lamp black and we're going to dry brush highlighting on it with Laguna, which is that pretty color. I stink the beach. Not Laguna Beach, just the beach. And we are going to dry brush highlighting on that hat. Um, you can see all the way here, here, up here, and around the corner, and down to the point. 
with a Laguna. Then don't wash your brush out because then we're going to just pick up some warm white and dry brush some brighter highlighting. So first, Laguna. And I'm going to start on this top here. I'm just going to follow the shape of the hat a little bit and take it around this corner. It widens out a little bit there and goes down into that point. Then let's start here. On the hat brim. And we're going to take it all the way around the curve. And then just pick up a little bit of warm white and blend it on your palette. And then go back and brighten that highlight by dry brushing that lighter value of Laguna. And you notice it doesn't go everywhere. Um, just like this front edge and those curls. All right, then you can wash out your brush. And now this is going to seem kind of counterintuitive because you based it in lamp black. But what I want you to do is shade with lamp black. What I want to do is I want to float shading on the hat above the hat band. Basically, I'm going to float shading on every edge of this top part of the hat. And then we can go and we can float shading out here on the outside edge of this curl. Go get the other curl. I'm going to float across the top edge of this hat. I floated this little. Um, notch right here where the um, pointy part of the hat folds over. And I'm going to float across the top here on this side. Also, it, it ends up, uh, let me see, what else? Oh, I want to go across the top edge of the brim. It's kind of a long float. I'm being consistent. All right. Let me block and blend that out a little bit. Okay, now we have one more highlight float to do, and what we want to do is we want to Float a little bit of Laguna up this separation here to make it stand out a little more. So you want to blend it out. You want it to be a soft float of Laguna. You don't want it to be, you know, in your face pretty blue. So I'm just going to float up that little 
notch there so that you can see that that tail of the hat is behind. All right, now we've um, <clears throat> now we're going to move to the hat band, and that was based in Laguna, and we are going to dry brush some highlighting on that with warm white. The stripes are baby pink, and what I did with those um, is I take my liner brush and just a little bit of water and I'm going to load pretty much the whole brush and what I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten it out so it's uh, square Let's see if you can see it better here um, there so I flattened it out so I can get a square tip and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just stroke on these stripes with that square tip of my liner brush and they don't have to go all the way down to the bottom and I don't know if you want to but I just kind of curved them a little bit and if you want to put one on the end the original doesn't have it in there but that's the way it worked out, so that's the way it's going to be. Easy peasy. That one didn't get quite square enough. Okay. And then just wipe out your liner brush and pick up some warm white. And you're just going to stroke a little bit of a highlight in the top of each of those uh, picket fence kind of looking stripes. All right. I'm going to go ahead and dry that. And then I'm going to float shading on the hat band across the pink stripes. Um, and it's going to be next to the hat brim with mermaid tail, which was that nice dark color that we used on the tie around the broom head. And let's just load some mermaid tail across the bottom of this hat band. Hat band is done. All right, so I'm going to let that dry, and the next thing we're going to work on is the frog, and he should go pretty quick and easy. Um, he's painted with Irish moss, and so when I come back, we'll work on Mr. Frog. All right, the frog. <clears throat> He was based with Irish moss, and as you can see, I didn't base him very solidly because there's a whole lot of stuff that goes on top of him, and so there was there was no sense to uh, spend all that time making him nice and opaque because we're just gonna add stuff on top that's gonna wash that out anyway. So we are going to dry brush some highlighting on our frog with golden yellow and basically just dry brush it anywhere you can get your brush in. We are going to paint some spots on him. He has some little tiny spots with thinned black forest green. So just a liner brush and a little bit of black forest green, thin it down and <clears throat> you can give him some little spots and they can be wherever you want they can be as big as you want um, they're not necessarily round um, so keep that in mind they're kind of odd shaped
And maybe he has a couple of little ones. And, um, hmm, maybe one over here. You can put as many spots as you want because <clears throat> surprisingly we're not going to highlight or shade them, which I know is a shock. But we're not going to do it. So you want those spots to dry. And then we're going to float highlighting on him with Irish Moss, which is his base color, plus a touch of warm white. And what I'm going to do basically is float the outside edge of his little feet. I'm going to float across his bottom, I guess, lip, or the, the top of the bottom of his mouth. Does that make sense? I don't know. Luckily, you can see where it is. And I also want to float a little bit of a highlight on the top of his head where his eyes are going to go. And then we're going to float shading on him with black forest green. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to float from his eyes down to his mouth. I'm going to go down the sides of his lower body. also going to go just a little bit of a float above where his eyes are going to go. I guess that's a little bit more than a little bit. And then a little underneath. Kind of like uh, bags. I'm going to soften those out. And then there's one more spot, and that's on his upper body. Whoops, let me get the little frog on there. Next to the mouth. He has um, some little web markings in his feet, and you can just take your liner brush and that thinned black forest green and just line the little webs on his feet. Three of them. The eyes are painted with warm white. <clears throat> look like. Those dry. You can see why I love this uh, Ranger Heat It Craft Tool. Nice buy on Amazon. Just make sure you get the American model. Unless you're in Europe, then you want to get the European model. But Make sure that you get the right plug for the country you're in. I use it all the time. So I'm going to take some graphite, very well blended out graphite. And it's just a touch of graphite, not a big old full on float. And I just want to float some graphite in the back of those eyes. And then I'm going to paint the pupils, which are pretty round, 
with lamp black. Now you could make him kind of goofy if you wanted, make his pupils in different places. Uh, I think I might make him a little goofy. Depends on where you put the pupil, what he looks like. And then I'm just going to add a little warm white highlight dot to each pupil. He has a little tongue that you want to paint in with royal fuchsia. Put the pattern on or you can just wing it, think like a tongue. Maybe I'll make his a little longer. Frogs have long tongues, don't they? And then I'm just gonna I'm just gonna wipe out my brush and pick up a little warm white and line a little bit of a highlight on that tongue. Again if it's still wet, that's okay. I think I got a little white, so I'm going to tone it down a little bit. Alright, works for me. Voila, a frog. Very good. We're moving right along. We are going to work on her hair next. And what you're going to need for her hair is like a f number four round or a fair uh, number four liner. And we're going to start with um, heritage brick. And what we can do is we can just roughly base in this hair area with heritage brick. So what I want to do is I want to just kind of rough in this hair. And you can see, I'm using a flat brush, and I'm not filling it in all the way. This hair down here, you, there's going to be some hair that's behind her head and behind her collar. So you want to be sure you get that in there. And it's going to be close to her face just like you have hair behind your head. And then as I come up here is when I'm going to start kind of adding it to her face. I kind of I am. And I might get it a little wavy right there. Down next to the hat. One side done. And with this one, you can try to avoid the cat as much as you can with this part. But as we pull the strokes and the strands of hair, it might be a little bit harder. But that's okay because he's painted with one coat of graphite, so we can just clean him up. Again, just a rough little base in. Again, up next to the hat. And next to the collar. side. We're going to pull a little bit. Alright. So, we've got our basin for our hair. 
doesn't look all that great just yet, but it'll be okay. It, because this is just the underwear. This is just the uh, the dark color in there. So the, actually we're going to put in a little bit darker color now. We're going to pull in some burnt umber. And this is where we start uh, defining the waves and the squirreliness of her hair. Okay, so usually you pull the way the hair grows. So I'm going to pull that way. And I want to get some out on top of her hat. So don't be afraid to do that. That's why we did the hat first before we worked on the hair. And you want to make sure you get plenty of this brown hair in this underneath part. Okay. Just kind of squiggle it on with your number four round. It doesn't have to be uh, at a point or uh, anything. You just need to just roughly, this is like easy hair. So there we go. Let's work on the other side. And you can get as messy as you want. She has been riding a broom. So, if it's pretty messy, that's good. You see, I'm still able to kind of stop when I get to the cat. But if you get a little on him, it's no big deal. And they keep telling you that so you won't be afraid. And again, this underneath needs to have this brown on it. Right, so that wasn't hard. So wipe the brush out. You probably you want to let this dry just a little bit. Because again, just like with the broom head, we don't want to get much. And our next color that we're going to apply in much the same manner is going to be Spiced Pumpkin. So, let's see. I want just a little bit of it in this underneath area. Not a lot. I don't want to take away too much of the dark. And that's about all I'm going to put in that underneath area. So now I'm going to start defining that hair a little bit more. And this is going to be another one of those instances where you can play with it back and forth with your colors. Um, it's not a one, two, three, and done kind of thing. You may let it dry and then decide, oh, I need some more uh, orange or I need some more yellow in there or something. So um, you're not confined to just the layers that I'm giving you here. You can always just stop the video and add more of whatever color you want. And then I did want to give her a few little hairs coming out from under her hat here. And let's see. Let's start getting her done on this side. And so on this side, I'm going to pull it opposite the way it grows, just because it's there behind the cat. Alright, 
starting to look a little like witch hair. Or my hair, if you see it right now. So again, I want to dry this a little bit because I don't want to make mush too much. A little mush is okay. So the next layer is going to be Spice Pumpkin plus some golden yellow. So I'm just going to mix it um, on my palette a little bit just to make a nice lighter value of Spice Pumpkin. Okay. I say okay like you're going to answer me. But okay. If it works for me. lightest color. It's actually not the lightest color, but I'm going to call it, it's the lightest color so far. And this, I'm not going to put down in the, behind the head area, because I don't really want that to be too much lighter. doesn't have to follow the strands of hair that you've already done. It can go completely uh, on its own. There again. All right. Now we're going to dry this and then we're going to stroke some um, golden yellow just here and there to highlight it. And then I'm probably going to go back in and stroke some more Spice Pumpkin just because I feel like I need a little bit more of the orange in it. So golden yellow first. And this is going to go wherever I feel like I want to highlight a strand or two more. So especially like along this edge and maybe through there. Yeah, I think I like that. And I'm going to go here. So just kind of look at it and say, oh, I think I want some highlights there. And if you decide you don't like it, you can always uh, stroke over it with some Spice Pumpkin or Heritage Brick. All right. So now I'm going to come back and I want to add a little bit more of the pumpkin color to it just because it's too blonde for me. Okay. And um, if this isn't 
flatten the orange back enough for you, you can always dry it and <clears throat> wash over the hair with thin down spice pumpkin. So there's always, <coughs> excuse me, a few different ways that you can get that witchy red, witchy orange hair back. All right. Now, let's dry this. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to float some burnt under umber shading on this underneath hair and where hair is coming out from under her hat. So burnt umber, a regular float. So I'm going to go next to her head, there, on both sides, and this kind of just attaches the hair to her head a little better too. And I want to go like at the base of this, just tap, oh I guess you can't see that, a little bit of burnt umber right at the base of those those um, flyaways that are coming out from under her hat. And then you also want to do that here. It doesn't go all the way across this hair, but just kind of where they're coming out from under the hat. So it's kind of a pity padded in there thing. And then I'm also going to go on this back hair next to this layer that's on top. And you didn't see that at all. So I'll show you again. It's right here where this hair is on top. You want to float on the back hair next to that. And we'll do that on the other side. And we also want to float around the cat, on the hair around the cat. So I'm going around his head and his one ear, unless you got hair all the way over to his other ear. And you want to go on there too. All right. Now, I'm going to float a little bit of heritage brick along this front edge here. And heritage brick was that first base color. So I'm just going to get in there and float it along that front edge. Again, where you couldn't see it. So just along this front edge, and then if you want, you can do a little bit here and there in her hair, just to make some of the waves and squiggles stand out a little more. Let me back up. So I did it in here and there. In So just kind of um, tones it down and and um, blends it in a little bit better. So it's not like five different colors just randomly stuck on top. It makes it look a little more hair-like. That's the word. So I'm going to go down this front edge. And then I also want to a little here and there again just to make it 
a little more interesting. Okay, I think I like that. She looks pretty messy. Now she does have a couple of little eyebrows that are under there. And they're kind of go up under her hat. And I just did those with my liner brush and a little bit of burnt umber. And if if you need eyebrows, if not, don't even worry about it. But I thought she looked kind of bare. All right, so she's got a couple little eyebrows. No big deal. All right. And next, we're going to work on our cat. Now, if you need to rebase him in, he is based with graphite. If you don't, that's fine too. I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm going to work with what's there. So I am going to dry brush some nice round cheeks with, uh, on him, which are going to kind of disappear, but you'll be able to see them a little bit, with um, Royal Fuchsia, which we already have out on our palette. Okay. Let me move my brushes so I can move over here. And I'm just going to give him a couple of little cheeks. Now, it doesn't matter if they get a little bright uh, or messy because we're going to cover them up with scriggly hair. Okay. Now, you're going to paint his nose and the inside of his ears with royal fuchsia also. Straight royal fuchsia, that inside triangle of his ears, and it do, again it doesn't have to be opaque. There's a lot that goes on top of this too. And let's paint his. I was going to say little nose, but it's actually a pretty big nose. If you like a smaller kitty cat nose, by all means, make yours smaller. And I'm going to go ahead and paint the eyes in with golden yellow. I know that sounds weird, but that's what I did. He has jaundice. All right, I am going to dry brush some highlighting in the top of the nose with warm white. And I'm also going to float some highlighting in the tips, top tips of the ears, and across the top of the nose with warm white. So it, the nose gets a dry brush, and then it's going to come back and get a highlight float. So just kind of touch your brush up inside the inside of those ears a little bit. And then we're going to go across the top of the nose. So while we let that dry, we are going to float a little bit of Irish moss down the left side of each eye. too much. I'm going to see a little more green. There we go. The pupils are lamp black. And again, you could dot them, but then you got to keep your 
and out of them. And then each of the pupils has a little warm white highlight dot. We are going to float shading in the bottom of the ears and in the bottom of the nose with deep burgundy. So the bottom of each ear gets a little float of deep burgundy. Just the inside of the ear, not the whole ear. And then you want to float deep burgundy in the bottom of the nose. All right, now we are going to start painting this scraggly fur on him. We're gonna do it first with lamp black. And so you wanna think like a scraggly old kitty. So I'm gonna use my liner brush and thinned lamp black. And I'm just going to start, I might start pulling some hair on his ears first. Just some little short, and on the ears it's more straight than it is scraggly. I guess because it's they're so short. And then I'm going to go on his head. I'm going to start um, on the top of his head. And just pick and pull some little bit of hair. And work my way down to between his eyes. shouldn't take too terrible long. And it depends on how long your hair is and how scraggly you want it. I'll come down here. Give him a little goatee. So it's just something you want to just give him a nice base of black scraggly hair. So I will probably continue to do this with the black and just kind of fast forward it so that you don't have to listen to a lot of silence because I don't talk while I'm doing this. So enjoy the fast forward forward. doesn't look that great yet. Well, I don't know, even know if he looks that great <clears throat> when he's done. So the next uh, layer we're going to um, line on here is I wanted him to have a little bit of blue in that hair. So I'm going to um, mix Laguna with a little bit of Lamp Black. Let me see if I 
can get you I want it to still have a blue tinge to it so it's just a little bit of lamp black you still want to be able to see that Laguna I'm gonna thin it down see I keep picking up more Laguna because I think it's not Laguna-y enough okay and then we're gonna go and we're gonna stroke this lighter color in all the same places and you can see it has a little bit of a blue tinge it needs a little bit more so really a tiny dot of lamp black in there that's better the smaller the liner you can work with the better it's going to be this I think is a little too big you may have to resort to a smaller one Again, I will fast forward through this part so that you don't get bored just watching me stroke blue hair on my cat. It's not because he's old. Also want to stroke a little bit of warm white just here and there so um, not as much as you did the black or the blue and I did change brushes so in a little bit nicer lines. And just a few in his little goatee. Not too many here. So you just kind of pick and choose where you want them. Don't forget you have um, whiskers that are going to come out there too. So you don't want to lose the whiskers in all the little highlighted hairs. On his body, I'm keeping it mainly through the center chest area. tail again too, just through the center, kind of. Okay. I am going to floats. I'm going to line some shading first above each eye with my liner brush and lamp thin down lamp black. So let's put his eyes into his head a little bit more. I think that helps. He doesn't have eyelashes for some reason. I don't know why. And I'm also going to float some lamp black shading on 
this little guy. I'm gonna go here on his ears, where they're behind his head, and I'm going to go on his chest under the broom. Oops, sorry. So on his chest under the broom. I just kind of tap it in and maybe drag a little bit of the color down into his uh, chest. I'm going to go on the tail under the broom. I'm going to go on the tail above the broom. Go. Uh, let's go around his nose. I'm going to turn him so I can do that easier. Upside down kitty action going. So I'm going to go around his nose. I want to get in that little area between his eyes. Probably just a little bit in this curve. And then I also want to go above the green border on the tail and on his body. Now, he has um, you want to line his little mouth with just straight lamp black. So it's just a little V. And then his whiskers are warm white. Think like a whisker. Make him look good. If you're doing good, I didn't. I think I want to line a little lamp black right here. Just to reinforce that shading. Alright, now if you feel like you want more hair on him, you can always go back in and add a little bit more. I think I want a little bit more, maybe some more black. So again, another thing you can play with for a while if you want. You don't have to. But I just think he needs a little bit more scraggly hair. In some places that looked a little bare. And there's our little scared kitty. So let's go ahead, as long as we have uh, some <clears throat> Laguna out on our palette. With our liner brush, there is a stripe that goes above this green border. And that's just straight Laguna with your liner brush. Now you get to show me your mad lining skills. It just kind of finishes off that edge a little bit. 
And that's why I told you you didn't have to worry about it too much. You want to stop when you get to the broom head and finish on the other side. All right, now just wipe your brush out. Pick up a little warm white for a lighter value Laguna. And you're just going to line a little bit of a highlight on this stripe through the center. And surprisingly, we did not line any shading. So we have to put some stars on. And uh, if you have a little star stencil, uh, if you got the kit, you got one of these. It might have been clear plastic, but either way. Um, and you can use whatever size stars you want. And we are going to stencil again. Now you can use a stencil brush or you can use the um, cosmetic wedge like I use. Just remember to pounce it out quite a bit so you don't end up with um, paint coming out underneath. And I kind of stayed away from these bigger stars on here and kept mostly to the two smaller sizes. And the only thing I want you to be aware of is um, you need to have odd numbers of stars. So just stencil away and I will probably fast forward through this too just because you, you sh pretty much know how to stencil. Right? Right. Okay, got an odd number amount of stars. I put several more stars on there than I did on the original, but you can put as many as you, or as few as you like, none at all. It's your piece. And so then we're, what we're going to do is um, keep in mind that uh, we're going to float a highlight in each, the top of each of these stars with warm white. I need some fresh warm white. It has a little bit of green in it. So I'm going to go on each star and float a highlight with warm white, just in like the top couple of um, points, not the whole thing. And basically it's just kind of sticking your um, uh, brush tip into the point and laying down a little bit of color. It doesn't have to be a lot, but they need it a little bit. Another fast forward moment for you. Okay, I think I got them all. And now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to dry brush a glow around each star. And I think you can see that um, they each have a little circle of golden yellow plus warm white dry brushed around them. So we'll get some golden yellow and some warm white. And I'm going to get ready to dry brush. So just a circle around them. It doesn't have to be a lot. Now, of course you don't want to dry brush up on your broom handle or any of those design elements just around the stars on the background. So we will come back when I'm done with that. All right, we are back. And now what we're going to do is we are going to either stencil or paint that lettering. I'm going to use a stencil that I used on the original piece. Oh, maybe I'm not because I revamped it. 
so let me get a new one. And I am going to kind of center this on there. What helps is you have these little squares. Three and a half, one, two, three, four. So, and this lettering is going to go on top of that broom a little bit. So you want to get it on there kind of as straight as you can. And then I would just tape the stencil down. And the advantage with these cosmetic sponges is you can just cut off the part that's um, dirty and use it some more. So the lettering is just um, lamp black. And it's just an easy peasy stencil. Or if you didn't get the stencil, you can paint it in. I've taken to cutting stencils for the lettering um, just because it's so much easier for me. And for you too. Because we don't like to do lettering at the end of a long class. Alright. Woohoo! Lettering is done. It's not, well, it's not completely done. We are going to line a shadow to the top and left of each letter, and I think you can see that on this uh, sample here. So, and that's with thin black forest green. Liner brush and thin black forest green. Sounds something maybe kind of tedious, but it really helps the lettering. Let me go down a little bit. So I'm just going to start up on the top edge a little bit. Come down the left side. So wherever there's a left side or the top of something like here would be considered the top of that R. This would be considered the top of that little stirrup on that R. So you're just going to line right next to the letter on the background. Now if you wanted to go through and um, paint in these breaks that were there because of the stencil, you could do that too and just touch it in with lamp black. I'll probably do that when I'm done with this. We have one more little thing to do to the lettering and what I did is I added an accent line in the left side of each letter with golden yellow. So I need a little bit more golden yellow. Not much, just a dot. And with my liner brush and some thin golden yellow, and it's not going to look like golden yellow because it's going on black probably going to look a little green. But I'm just going to go into the left side of each letter and add a line. It's not on every part, it's just in that far left side. So like on the M, it's just on that one side. So that makes it kind of easy.
and I did add the little uh, apostrophe or whatever that thing is called. one more little thing to do and that's this um, little edging that's on here and this is just really easy you're going to take your flat brush and some lamp black and I will get up close here and show you what I'm going to do I'm just going to corner load my flat brush just like I was going to go float except I'm going to have a whole lot of paint in my brush and all I'm going to do is with that corner loaded side, I'm just going to go down this edge and kind of wiggle it on there. So I know that Chris Hoy can do it with a round brush, twist in it. I, I could never get the hang of it. So this is just my way of doing it. So let's go down to the bottom here. And I just like the way it kind of finishes this off. Again, I'll just fast forward. Alright, so there you go. You have gotten a finished project. You just need to uh, let it dry, remove any pattern lines you might see, and then uh, sign it and varnish it. And I appreciate you hanging out with me, and I hope that you've learned something, or at least I made you smile. I always feel like I've accomplished something if I can make you smile. So. Hopefully I'll see you again in another class, either in person or in another Artful webinar. Thank you so much and have a great week.